Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest news, trends, and innovations from thought leaders from within the digital infrastructure industry. I'm Dean Perrine, EVP at JSA, and we are coming to you. Atif, we're live right now. Right. We're, we are live in Honolulu, Hawaii at PTC 2025. And as I just said, to my right is Mr. Antif Ansar. Antif is the executive chairman and co-founder of Foresight. Antif, welcome to JSA TV. Thank you, Dean. Thanks for having me here. And aloha, everybody from Hawaii. Yeah, aloha to you. You're the first one to say aloha today. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Antif is my last interview of the day, which is good because my voice is saying is saying bye-bye to me <laughs> as well. So Antif, I'm going to jump right in. We're going to talk data center construction projects, specifically how notoriously slow to deliver these uh, projects can be. Why don't you talk to our viewers a bit about the best practices for making sure that they are staying on time, on budget, and, and delivering on the expectation. Absolutely. Well, Dean, first of all, huge thanks for having me here. My pleasure. There's about 5,000 megawatts worth of data centers being built in the US alone at the moment. The oh. volume of construction is through the roof. It's 10 times more than it was four years ago. The supply chain, however, is not 10 times bigger <laughs> or better. You're the first one to say that today. This is big. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So you need to find ways of really overriding that complexity yeah. to keep these projects on track. Otherwise, they are by default spinning out of control. Interesting, so yeah. Any other assumption that they're not is yeah. would be a poor one. So here are a few good tips to yeah. try and do that. First of all, planning is essential. Schedule is king, but nine out of 10 data centers are running late. Mm. So you've got to build an interactive, collaborative schedule from the very start that's not just produced by one consultant or by the, your contractor. Yeah. Everybody, your architects, designers, your commissioning agents, your contractors, your MEP uh, suppliers, OEMs, yeah. they've all got to be in the room and make commitments to when they can deliver the program and have that visibility. Now, it's not just a uh, exercise that's done with post-it notes, although that's a good start. <laughs> You've got to put it in a database, right? <laughs> yeah. um, so the two databases in the industry that are good practice, Primavera P6, that's mm -hmm. an Oracle product that's been around for a while. So that's a good tool to use, mm -hmm. as well as Microsoft Project, which mm -hmm. is a competing tool um, as well. And either way, uh, you know, we're agnostic to, to what you use, yeah. but this information has got to go in there. Then take that data and use AI tools like Foresight and combine them with historical data. So we've got one of the largest libraries of data center construction timelines, uh -huh. not just the baselines, but the as builds. And there's a lot of variances, and yeah. all, all yeah, the yeah. variances point to delay. So you've got to incorporate <laughs> that right up front. Yeah. Uh, and that's one of the good practices is once you've established that collaboration is to then establish accountability uh, among the parties so they can make those mutual commitments um, and adhere to them. A third thing I would say is that don't leave this to chance. And executives in data center industry are extremely busy right now. Yeah. Almost all the C-level people are busy raising money because mm -hmm. they've got very robust mm -hmm. yeah. pipelines yes. of building new data centers. So that means they're externally oriented and leaving the project management to to internal teams and to third parties. That doesn't work. You yeah. need to have more governance in place. Mm -hmm. um, and the model we like to propose is, a, is called a three lines model uh, by the IIA. Um, and the basic idea is the first line is your project team doing daily updates. The second line is people typically based in headquarters that are not on site looking on a weekly or monthly basis. Huh. Uh, and the third is a C-level review on a quarterly basis across your entire portfolio. So put in that governance um, and don't turn away from the inevitable problems that are going to arise in your construction program. Yeah, no, that's 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 fantastic. I feel like everything that you've just said, I, we could spend the next week discussing <laughs> just those things. The other thing that you mentioned that it hadn't really occurred to me because I was talking to my team uh, back in the office about the the sheer amount of investment in data centers mm -hmm. just in the US alone in the first like two or three weeks of 2025. And when you mentioned the supply chain and the chip manufacturers, I'm like, they're probably going, oh no, now, now what are we going to do? And what, and what you're saying is that we've 
calm down. We've got a solution. We've got a solution for some of this. But you also mentioned AI, and that's good because I was going to mention at some point during yeah. this conversation, you can't leave JSA TV without talking about AI. But how are how is it that you are using AI specifically to kind of to help your customers? Absolutely. So look, because the data center programs are so complex, um, you know, uh, somebody building a couple hundred megawatts, mm -hmm. that's, you know, a huge investment running to the billions of dollars. That means the raw information is in multiple databases inside their systems, yeah. in their ERP systems, inside uh, databases like Primavera P6. So first use of AI is to live as a layer of intelligence on top of your existing systems of record. That's a very non-obtrusive use of AI. Yeah. Foresight is one of the specialists in this. Um, so your teams are carrying on you know, collecting the data that they are collecting anyway, but use AI as a layer of intelligence on top to make sense of that morass of data you're collecting, which just living there on its own yes. is only increasing the complexity, not helping you with it. To summarize that, that visibility is key. So what you can't measure, you can't manage. The first use of AI is to, to drive that visibility within the project, um, you know, a world that will be, and particularly with planning, look at your P6 schedules, upload them on a weekly basis into an AI tool like Foresight, see what's going on. If the plan is constantly changing, that's already a red flag. So, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, if people are constantly changing their mind and, mm -hmm. and do that both at the C level as well as the project level, the P level. Yeah. So we're really big on this, creating this alignment between the project teams as mm -hmm. well as uh, the COOs yeah. or the typical or CROs because the chief revenue officer ultimately making those those commitments. So right. first use of AI is uh, drive visibility. Second is stress test your data against historical benchmarks because any AI is built on historical data. So you've got a wealth of um, past projects to systematically learn from. Mm -hmm. um, so again, use foresight uh, style AI yeah. tools to create those stress test benchmarks. And the third point is, once you've created that culture of visibility, that's not just a technological project, it's also a psychological uh, <laughs> yes. uh, organizational uh -huh. uh, process. Once you've created that culture of visibility, once you've created a culture of stress testing against historical performance, then you're ready to create opportunities of where do we accelerate? Are there areas that from an evidence-based perspective, we can do in parallel mm -hmm. that helps us speed us time? Can we apply resources in a very strategical, surgical way to accelerate some activities instead of applying them in a generic way, which is very expensive? Yeah. So that then highlights ways of optimizing, accelerating your schedule, but based in evidence rather than in emotion. The, the implications on business, I don't care what business you're talking about, are, are massive Absolutely. in everything that you're saying right now. And the fact that you're using AI in a very mature way when others are still trying to figure out what it is, how it works, if they need it, how they can use it, they know that they're going to have to use it at some point, and you're using it in a very mature way, um, which is, is very exciting. I feel Again, I feel like Thank I could you. talk about this forever. Um, but final question, how does Foresight's AI, we're going to keep on AI, uh, how, do, how does Foresight's AI-driven platform turn time management into a strategic advantage? Great question, Dean. So time is money. Yeah. Almost every single organization I've ever worked with has a CFO, a chief financial officer. Yeah. I've never met a chief time officer. <laughs> so first thing is Maybe. use AI almost like your automated chief time officer. Because somebody's got to manage and keep that time. Nobody does time accounting. There's yeah. no um, sort of audit or double entry accounting <laughs> for time. But that is money because it's revenue. Mm -hmm. It's also SLA penalties. It's cost of capital. It's inflation. So uh, if you're not managing your time properly, you can be rest assured that the cash is not being managed properly either. Yeah. So I think CFOs and investment uh, directors have to get involved in that. And again, although they may not be construction specialists, they have to take a very keen interest in that mm -hmm. because the delivery of that committed cash rests upon certain timeline sequences yeah. and milestones being met. So I think that will be my kind of key advice around time management yeah. is that uh, put as much attention to it as you're putting it on your financial fiduciary responsibility. And that helps you drive 
far better use of cash inside your business and then drive the collaboration and accountability you need in order to succeed. Atif, your passion is palpable. Thank you. I, I absolutely, I, I have learned a ton in the few minutes that we've had. Unfortunately, that is the end of our time. Atif, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Dean. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you viewers for watching JSA TV. Stay curious, stay connected and happy networking. We'll see you soon. Thank you.